It's been another two days and Tae Hyung was still unconscious. Wyan's mind raced with worst case scenarios. What if he didn't make it? What if she was left to pick up the pieces of a life she had never truly wanted? Just as she was starting to lose hope, a soft voice called out from the doorway. Wyan? She spun around, her heart racing, to see a nurse standing in the doorway. Yes? The doctor would like to see you, the nurse said, her expression sympathetic. Your husband is awake. Wang's heart skipped a beat as she followed the nurse to Tae Hyung's room. She had steeled herself for the worst, but as she entered the room, she was taken aback by the sight of Tae Hyung lying in the bed, his eyes open and fixed on her. For a moment, they just stared at each other, the tension between them palpable. Wan's heart was racing, her palms sweating, as she searched for something to say. She stuttered, her voice barely above a whisper. His eyes narrowed and for a moment Wyan thought she saw a glimmer of something in their depths. But it was quickly extinguished, replaced by the casual, cold indifference. She smiled through the tears, walking to his bed. You're awake. Her voice had that genuine happiness. She caressed his cheeks. How are you feeling? The young's gaze slid away from hers, his eyes fixed on some point on the ceiling. I'm fine, he said curtly. The silence that followed was oppressive and Wyan felt like she was suffocating under the weight of it. She knew she had to say something, anything, to break the tension. Is there, is there anything I can get you? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Young's case snapped back to hers, and for a moment, Ryan thought she saw a flash of anger in his eyes.
but it was quickly masked, replaced by the usual cold indifference. No, he said, his voice dripping with disdain. I don't need anything from you. Van felt a pang of hurt, but she pushed it aside. She had grown accustomed to Tae Hyung's coldness, and she knew that she should not let it get to her. I'll just, I'll just leave you to rest then, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. As she turned to leave, Taehyung's voice stopped her. Why and she turned back to him, her heart racing with mix of emotions. Yes. Remember, he said, his voice low and menacing. I don't want you here. I don't want your pity or your concern. I just want to be left alone. Van felt a stinging sensation in her eyes and she knew that she was on the verge of tears. She pushed them back, her heart hardening against the cold, distant man who lay in the bed. I'll remember, she said, her voice cold and detached. As she turned to leave, Taehyung's gaze followed her. His eyes fixed on her with an intensity that made her skin crawl. She knew that she would never be able to change him, that he would always be a stranger to her now. But as she walked out of the room, she couldn't help but feel a glimmer of hope. Maybe, just maybe. This accident would be a wake-up call Taehyung needed to change. Maybe, just maybe, he would finally see her as more than just a pawn in their family's game. The rest of the days went by with Wyan taking care of him even though he always said he didn't need her. She kept helping him whenever in need. Wyan even rejected a huge offer she got from her favorite artist to work with them because she had to leave for abroad and stay there for two years. She decided to stay by Taehyung's side day and night, working hard to make him stand on his feet. But he didn't seem to be getting any better. In fact, he was getting worse. One day, as Wyan was checking his temperature, the doctor walked in, his face somber.
Vyan, I'm glad you are here. I need to talk to you. Please follow me to the office. They made their way towards the doctor's office and as she entered, she saw Taehyung's sister sitting there already. Please have a seat, the doctor offered, sitting on his own chair behind the table. He sighed before saying, I'll be completely honest with you both. It's not looking good. I'm afraid. Taehyung's health is stagnant. He's not responded to the treatments. Vyan's eyes widened, her mind racing with questions. What do you mean? Is that the medication? Is there something we can do? The doctor shook his head, his expression grave. It's not the medication, Vyan. It's the him himself. He is not willing to live. What do you mean? Of course he wants to live, his sister interrupted. The doctor sighed, his eyes filled with compassion. Sometimes people get stuck in a rut. They lose their will to live, their purpose, and that's what's happening to Taehyung. He's not fighting to get better because he's lost his reason to live. Ryan felt a lump form in her throat, lost his reason to live. She had a feeling she knew where it was going. Is there anything that he wanted but never got? The doctor asked and Ryan stayed silent, deep in thoughts. She knew it all. Tay's sister furrowed her brows before shaking her head as no. I don't think so. What about you, Vyan? Do you know what's missing? Vyan came out of her daze. Huh? No, no. She shook her head, even though she knew what would heal Tayho. The doctor sighed. You need to find out what he wants before the situation gets out of control. Vyan and Tehi's sister nodded before getting up and leaving the office.
As they got out, Taehyung's sister was overwhelmed by doctor's words. Her eyes filled with tears. She collapsed on the ground, sobbing. Wan panicked, kneeling down beside her, pulling his sister in her embrace. They sisters sniffled, begging Wan. I don't know what's happening, Wan. We are losing hope. Do something, please. Save my brother. Save his life, Wan. I beg you. He's your best friend. You must know what he wants. Wan was in a tough spot. It was either her happiness or Taehyung's.